When you think of the greatest of all time, who comes to mind? LeBron James, Lionel Messi, Muhammad Ali. These legends have all left their mark in sports history as being the best in their fields. So what about the world of Trackmania? Maybe Carl Jr., the tournament powerhouse who amassed over 40 victories, or Hefest, who over the years has proven himself to be one of the greatest hunters the game has ever seen, or perhaps Scrappy, who has towered above everyone else in total Cup of the Day wins for years. Among these titans, there's an unsung hero who I believe deserves a place on this list. A player who has battled relentless self-doubt from the very beginning and has proven time and time again they are worthy of the title of Khaki Champion. This video will share their story, how a casual Trackmania player and map builder overcame insecurity and incredible adversity to become the greatest khaki player of all time. This is the story of Simo 900. In late 2009, a 10-year-old kid from Finland who went by Simo 900 logged into Trackmania Nations Forever for the very first time, not knowing the incredible journey that lay ahead. Simo quickly fell in love with the game, especially enjoying RPG tracks. These tracks are built with a focus on pathfinding, often winding through unique paths and passageways that can take players hours to unravel. Before long, Simo hungered for more, so he ventured into the realm of trial maps. These maps, like RPG maps, are long and complex, but instead of finding the path, you're forced to perform difficult tricks and stunts, making for grueling marathons to the finish line that test patience, endurance, and skill. When asked why he enjoyed trial maps, Simo simply replied that he was drawn to the challenge of really hard tracks. As he continued to play Trackmania, Simo gradually established himself as a dominant player in the world of trial. He was the fourth person to finish the now infamous Och, renowned as the hardest trial map of its time. When AAF emerged as the new behemoth on the scene, Simo was the very first to complete it. When Ignatol built Something on Acid, his sequel to Och, the map shot to the top of the list of the most difficult trials. Simo once again made history by being the first player to cross the finish line. Only six players have managed to do the same in the seven years since. In 2013, Simo formed T3, short for Trackmania Trial Team, a group dedicated to taking down Trackmania's hardest trial maps. Even a decade later, joining T3 remains a prestigious goal for players due to its tough entry requirements. Despite his early success, Simo struggled with self-confidence. From the outside, it looked like Simo was leading the charge in trial, but internally he didn't consider himself even close to the skill or status of top players, so he started looking elsewhere for a skill to master. As he began to experiment in the Trackmania editor, his interest for building his own trial maps grew. His creativity overflowed into one map after the other, and the community quickly noticed Simo's seemingly natural ability to create absolute masterpieces. One of his most well-known tracks, Final Enigma, was and still is widely known to be the hardest humanly possible trial map ever built due to its incredibly intricate and complex tricks. Five years later, it still has zero finishers. He also delved into building other map styles, focusing mostly on full speed, full speed stunt, and press forward maps. All of these styles center around high speed driving and often have mind boggling tricks that demand a complete understanding of how the Trackmania car moves and a total mastery of skill. In Simo's words, I focused on putting creative twists on everything. Basically, I wanted to reinvent each style in my own way. His maps garnered hundreds of awards on TMX, and gradually he built a reputation as being one of Trackmania's most prolific and talented map builders. Over the span of nearly seven years, Simo immersed himself almost entirely into mapping, crafting a huge portfolio of nearly every style of track. His commitment to creating new and innovative maps gave him the unique opportunity to master car control in a way that no one had ever done before. Unbeknownst to Simo, these skills would play a crucial role in his future success. However, for now, they lay dormant, a massive pool of untapped potential. As Simo continued to explore what Trackmania had to offer, he occasionally dipped his toes into khaki events in his spare time. He enjoyed playing the maps from time to time, but never took the competition seriously. Other players had been dominating the khaki scene for years, making competing incredibly intimidating for the already unconfident Simo. In early 2020, the Trackmania community organized an event called Lunatic Extreme. It gathered exceptional players to compete on hard maps with the end goal of being the overall fastest player. For Simo, this event sparked an unusual interest, and he decided it couldn't hurt to give it a shot. After a few days of playing, he was surprised to find himself standing shoulder to shoulder with the competition's top players. Despite feeling like he didn't belong, he decided to step up his efforts to see just how far he could go in the competition. 
After a long and hard grind, Simo managed to win the Lunatic Extreme event, marking his debut as a formidable contender in this style of Trackmania competition. Simo was thrilled, never expecting to see himself do well in a Trackmania competition, let alone win one. While hunting the Lunatic Extreme maps, Simo couldn't help but notice that hype was starting to build for another event, one much more well-known and one that was garnering quite a bit more attention. The 5th edition of Kakius Khaki was just around the corner, and the buzz in the community was tangible. For those who may not know, Kakius Khaki is an event where players come together once a year to take part in a unique competition. Participants play a set of specifically created maps released just for this event, and the goal is to finish as many of these maps as possible in one month. The catch is that these maps are intentionally designed to be extremely difficult, often featuring unique bugs and or tricks that players may have never seen before. The person who has finished the most maps at the end of the month is the winner, and if multiple players finish all the maps, then it comes down to who has the best average placements across every map. At this point in time, only four players had managed to win a Khaki event. Joe Hals in Khaki is Khaki 1, Blaster X in KK2, Edge in KK3, and Virtual in KK4. As Khaki is Khaki 5 rolled around, hundreds of talented players had their eyes set on becoming the fifth name on that list, and after a small confidence boost from his recent win, Simo wanted to try his luck. On the 29th of February 2020, the event kicked off. After a few days, players like Marmalade, Efest, Mig, and Daw were all doing very well, their finishes quickly adding up. The community as a whole quickly realized that the 50 maps in KK5 were a different breed, and that this edition was going to be by far the most challenging one yet. And yet, to everyone's surprise, this didn't seem to face Simo at all. It only took 8 hours for Simo to work his way into first place, and from then on he got very comfortable. I would love to paint Khaki as Khaki 5 as a dramatic and suspenseful month of competition, but that just wasn't the case. Simo exceeded every expectation, leaving the competition in the dust and shocking even himself. Despite being successful in Trial and Lunatic Extreme, it wasn't until this point that he finally started to realize he might have what it takes to be a top player in the game. It was also during Khaki as Khaki 5 that Simo discovered a new passion for solving maps, as Khaki builders often keep the intended method of finishing a secret, letting players figure it out on their own. He led the way by being the first player to complete many of these tracks, and found numerous cheeses, or easier solutions than the mapper intended, as well. Simo won Khaki as Khaki 5 in dominant fashion, completing 48 out of 50 maps, with the runners-up only finishing 45 out of 50. It wasn't just Simo's skill that had set him apart, but his uncanny ability to analyze a map and find its weaknesses, undoubtedly a result of the years he had spent building his own maps. When asked what he thinks set him apart from the rest, Simo replied, I really am kind of stoic about fails and such. If I wasn't, I wouldn't be where I am. Emotions don't often come into play for me in Khaki. Along with an unparalleled level of car control from his years on trial maps, all these skills came together to form the perfect Khaki player, and it was very clear that Simo was going to be a major threat in these events moving forward. After winning Khaki's Khaki 5, Simo was hooked. Having tasted Khaki victory for the first time, Simo was hungry to prove himself again when Khaki's Khaki 6 came around a year later. He decided he would stream his gameplay on Twitch this time around, and he got a warm welcome from viewers who were excited to watch Simo compete for a potential second victory. From the moment the event began, these viewers were not disappointed. With his newfound confidence, Simo carried every bit of momentum he might have had from Khaki's Khaki 5 into Khaki's Khaki 6, blazing into the lead almost instantly. He reached bronze rank, an award for reaching 15 out of 50 finishes, on the third day and didn't take his foot off the gas. Two days later, on day 5, he reached 25 out of 50, meaning he was halfway through the maps with 25 days left in the event. Nobody else had even reached bronze. During Khaki is Khaki 6, Simo had even more going for him. His luck was incredible. Some of the hardest maps were falling with seemingly no effort from Simo, and even he couldn't deny that some of these finishes had been gifted to him. It was clear that Simo was performing at a level that no one had ever seen before. He had worked his way through dozens of the hardest maps in the game, and by day 20, Simo was only 4 finishes away from reaching the coveted 50 out of 50. Unfortunately, these last 4 were absolute titans. Minus 110, minus 120, minus 126, and minus 150. Three of these maps are purely based on luck, so they were essentially a waiting game. 
minus 150 in particular is basically impossible. The map requires a specific Uber bug to set the player up for a second Uber, and all the player can do is pray that everything lines up to send the car flying into the finishes. It had taken the builder 100 hours to successfully validate. The fourth map on the list, minus 126, was considered by Simo to be the final boss of the event, and he highly doubted he was going to be able to finish it at all. Thankfully, for now, he could focus on the others, and 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning, February 20th, he got his biggest stroke of luck in any CAC event up to this point. Here is the story in his words. During KK6, I actually had a very good sleep schedule, and I basically woke up at 7 a.m. daily. That day, I set up an alarm for 6 a.m. to play the minus 150 session. It's actually a super uneventful session. Kinda late into the session, I finally get my first Uber. I land kinda middle, so I attempt to delay the grass slide trajectory a bit. Then I freeze. I'm just thinking, those are the finishes. Why am I flying to the finishes? This is a 100 hour validation map. I'm completely frozen. And then it hits me that I've instinctively started releasing, but too late. I'm too high for one finish and too low for the other. Of course, I'm wasting my chance. And after the longest seven seconds ever, I find myself barely landing on an even lower finish. I go backwards into the finish and just sprint away from my PC. This is by far my most vivid khaki memory. I still have that moment immortalized on my wall. The next day, minus 120 would also fall, and one day later, he completed minus 110, finishing the last of the lottery maps and putting him at 49 out of 50. Going into the final week of the event, Simo had just one map left, minus 126, the final boss. The main issue on this map is the nearly impossible start trick, a precise edge bug while driving backwards to bug into the road. After this, an entirely inconsistent and lucky end trick still awaits the player, making for a hopeless experience since the start is so rare to begin with. Ever since first trying the map, Simo had a hunch that there was a weakness somewhere on minus 126, a crack in the armor that would allow the map to be cheesed. Armed with his years of experience building and solving maps, Simo spent hours fishing around in the in-game editor, desperately looking for anything to make the start section more manageable. Finally, after combing over the track for what seemed like forever, Simo effectively broke minus 126. Here was the plan. First, he would land on the top of the road, and then climb the road border. He could then drop under the road, perform a precise trick to bug halfway into the road above, and finally could continue the track as intended. This find motivated Simo to give Minus 126 another shot, and on his very first session playing the track after finding the cheese, Simo completed the final boss of Khaki's Khaki 6, achieving 50 out of 50 on day 23 without a single competitor in sight. No one else came even remotely close to catching up in the following days. And with that, Simo successfully secured his second Khaki win, a feat no one had ever done before. It was becoming abundantly clear that Simo wasn't just a strong player, but an undeniable powerhouse that was miles ahead of everyone else. Going into the next year, Simo knew he had an opportunity to pull off a Khaki three-peat. He saw this as the potential crowning achievement of his khaki career, as winning three times before anyone else could win twice would be the ultimate display of dominance. But Simo knew it wasn't going to be easy. Khaki is Khaki 7 had arrived, and with it came new challenges, those being format changes and some of his strongest competition yet. For this edition, the organizers decided to go back to the event's roots, meaning slightly easier maps and the total number of maps jumping from 50 to 75. This shifted the dynamic from finish as many as you can to much more of a hunter's edition to win. It was highly likely that multiple players would reach 75 out of 75, so it would come down to who could get the fastest times on the maps, resulting in a winning average. In addition to this unique format, Khaki had been attracting more attention, and more players than ever, including pros, were planning to participate in Khaki as Khaki 7. Despite feeling uncomfortable with the new format, Simo was determined. The event kicked off on February 1st, 2022, and right away it was clear that Simo's competitors weren't messing around. Unlike previous editions, Simo didn't jump out into the lead early, but instead it was a close battle from the very start. Incredibly talented players like Alex, Scandier, and Nixion were side by side with Simo after the first few days, but as time passed, it became evident who was going to be Simo's strongest competitor. Scandier and Simo had begun pulling ahead of the pack, both reaching the silver rank within a few hours of each other, leaving the others far behind. After reaching silver, Scandier's progress slowed down a bit, allowing Nixion to rejoin the top contenders. Despite the race being much closer than Simo was used to, he stayed focused, reaching gold just three days after silver. After this, the players began to even out as everyone struggled with the final few difficult maps. 
Nixion finally broke through and was the first one to reach 75 out of 75. Skandir followed soon after and finished his last map on the next day, and Simo was left with just one map, 271. This is an incredibly challenging Uber map that requires a precise landing on a blue wall to finish. After nailing this landing, all that's left is an easy jump to the finish, but Simo had something special in mind. An incredibly risky, only slightly faster strategy. One that no sane person would dare to go for after finally getting a nearly impossible landing on their final map to reach 75 out of 75 to tie it up with the leaders. But this is Simo we're talking about, and as he landed on the blue wall and lined up his approach, his Twitch viewers watched in suspense. Simo accelerated towards the finish, his car perfectly straight, before suddenly yanking to the left much earlier than anyone had expected. For a split second, it looked like he'd thrown away his chance at finishing. But instead, with an incredible display of confidence, poise, and skill, Simo sniped the bug fin on 271, live in front of hundreds of onlookers. Despite this epic moment, Simo knew the battle was far from over. The leaders had just six days left to focus completely on hunting the maps and lowering their average. Although Nixion had reached 75 finishes first, his average was well below Skandir and Simo's, so he didn't present much of a threat. On the other hand, an unexpected challenger had been quickly climbing the ranks in the background, going mostly unnoticed until now. Plasterex had joined the competition a few days late, but had put an immense effort in order to catch up, and his average was insane. Going into the final week, Plasterex was three finishes behind the leaders, but his average towered above theirs. As the hunt continued, Skandir edged just slightly ahead of Simo, and as the event neared its end, it was as close to a dead heat as you can get in a khaki event. Skandir in first, with all 75 maps completed and a 9.95 average. Simo trailing closely behind with 75 finishes and a 10.17 average. Although not officially in the top three, the clear third player competing for the win was Plasterex, with 74 out of 75 and an absurd 9.20 average. Would Simo be able to overtake Skandir in the final hours of the event, completing his khaki legacy and closing out the first ever khaki three-peat? Could Plasterex clutch a finish on his last map, allowing his average to solidify him as the dominant winner of khaki as khaki 7? Or would Skandir's average stand strong and hold off these talented players? It all came down to the final few maps of the event, starting with 233. This map relies purely on luck, a Uber map forcing a precise grass slide into one of the scattered poles on the grass. Interestingly, it was one that Simo had finished on his very first session, and fittingly, it was Plasterex's only remaining map, meaning he had one last chance to complete all 75. As the timer crept down and hundreds of viewers looked on, Simo and Skandir could only hold their breath as Plasterex desperately tried to finish the map. clock hit zero, and despite his best efforts, Plasterex couldn't finish 233, leaving just one map to determine who would emerge the winner of Khaki as Khaki 7. This final map was 274, and this session had more gravity than any before it. Simo's average was just 0.2 behind Skandir's, a margin so slim that it could potentially be swung by just a single placement change. Conveniently, Simo's personal best on 274 was particularly bad. If he could improve his time, there was a chance that he could pass Skandir in the last possible moment. Once again, Skandir was forced to wait with bated breath as Simo focused harder than ever in these final 10 minutes. Hundreds of players gathered on the server, and many more in Simo's Twitch stream, hoping to witness a historic last-minute comeback. But the time struck zero. And with that, Kakius Kaki 7 came to an end, leaving Skandir the deserving champion and Simo with an impressive but disappointing second place. Simo was devastated. Going into a different format, he had known that it would be a closer battle than ever before, and that Skandir was a phenomenal competitor who deserved the win just as much as he did. Still, he hadn't lost in over three years, and falling short after such an intense battle was absolutely heartbreaking. On top of this, he was left physically and mentally drained, as he had livestreamed every second of his gameplay during Khaki is Khaki 7, something that very well might have affected his performance. Nevertheless, Simo took his defeat with grace, knowing that this time he had simply been outclassed by Skandir, who had been one of the very best players in the game for years and has only continued to improve even to this day. Rather than give up, Simo stayed focused, 
Khaki is Khaki A was just a year away, and with it would come a golden opportunity to remind everyone what he was capable of. Khaki is Khaki A was another negative addition, meaning harder maps, but only 50 to complete. This was an ideal scenario for Simo, who had absolutely steamrolled the last two negative additions. But after KK7, he knew he couldn't lose sight of the end goal for even a second. His loss in Khaki's Khaki 7 had left him craving that feeling of domination from his past wins, and right from the beginning he was determined to win again at any cost. He had learned from KK7 and decided to livestream a bit less during KK8, allowing him to stay focused while playing. While other players tended to focus on easier maps first and ignore the harder maps until later, Simo had a different strategy. He focused on every map from the start, aiming for a 50 out of 50 result from the very beginning. Khaki is Khaki 8 launched on March 3rd, 2023, and it was quickly apparent that Simo was playing better than ever. He claimed the lead early on, just as he had in Khaki is Khaki 5 and 6. He reached 25 out of 50 and earned the silver rank on day 8, while most other top players were just reaching bronze. A week later, he achieved gold rank, but his pace slowed down significantly as he got closer and closer to his 50th finish. Khaki is Khaki 8 had some incredibly challenging maps, making completing all 50 a daunting task. And to make things worse, Simo wasn't alone in the race. The player Link had been grinding as well, and on March 29th, just four days before the event's end, Link became the first player to finish all 50 maps in Khaki is Khaki 8, pulling into first place. Link could now work on improving his average, which was slightly behind Simo's. Still stuck at 49 out of 50, Simo was wrestling intense self-doubt, just as he had before his winning streak. The only map standing between him and potential victory was minus 173, easily one of the hardest khaki maps ever built. After beating hundreds of these extremely challenging maps, it seemed like Simo had hit a brick wall. The map requires the player to aim a jump perfectly through the side of a ring checkpoint to get a one in a million bounce that keeps the car's trajectory perfectly straight while sending it into a backflip to squeeze through the opposite side of the ring. It needs a flawless flight, maintaining this perfect trajectory, all so that the player can finally have a single chance to squeeze through yet another hole in the side of a ring and land to drive to the finish. Not only is this one of the most luck-based and improbable maps ever built, but Simo was at an inherent disadvantage. Being a keyboard player meant that keeping the car perfectly straight before the jump was significantly more difficult compared to controller players, who can make much smaller steering adjustments as needed. In Simo's own words, minus 173 felt absolutely devastating. Is it really this map that prevents me from reaching my goal? This drive in a straight line and pray for a bounce map? It just felt like some kind of absurd joke to me. Despite the odds being stacked heavily against him and the pressure of Link already being at 50 out of 50, Simo stayed determined. Even if he had doubted he could finish, he was still going to try. Every minus 173 session saw Simo desperately putting up attempts, and hundreds of players tuned into his stream, hoping to witness the moment that Simo made history. A few days before Link had completed his final map, Simo had a miraculous attempt that made it all the way to the second ring, but narrowly missed squeezing through the hole. As it turned out, he wasn't the only one with this experience. Landing inside the second ring was proving to be the biggest challenge on the map, which just added to the anxiety of playing minus 173, as the player had to make a split second decision of whether or not to release the acceleration to aim for the hole. Finally, two full days of grinding later, Simo had another chance. He started the run like any other, lined his car up for the jump, and got that same miraculous bounce, sending him hurtling towards the second ring. Time seemed to move in slow motion, as all the same feelings from minus 150 flooded into Simo's brain once again. This could be his last chance. His biggest goal, one that he had spent three years working towards, the Khaki is Khaki 8 win and the coveted Khaki 3 P could all be decided with this single attempt. After seeing the car's trajectory, Simo made the quick decision to continue accelerating through the air, hoping the bounce had pushed him far enough to get through the hole. All he could do is pray, and as his car barely squeezed into that last ring, Simo knew he had done it. 50 out of 50. With this, he overtook Link and put himself back in the lead, and all he had to do was maintain his position for four more days, and Simo did just that. As Khaki is Khaki 8 drew to a close, Simo would only continue to extend his lead. He finished the event with a 6.02 average, the best performance of his Khaki career. Although Link put up a valiant effort, Simo wasn't about to let the 3 piece slip through his fingers this time. On March 2nd, the event was officially over, and Simo was once again Khaki champion. His KK8 performance is one of the most impressive ever seen in Khaki. All 50 maps completed, and the best average anyone had seen in years, on some of the hardest Khaki maps ever created. 
the first to finish 14 different maps, paving the way for his competitors to follow in his footsteps. A third khaki victory, closing out one of the most extraordinary legacies in Trackmania history, pure dominance. As of the making of this video, Simo is the undisputed greatest of all time in khaki. In addition to his three wins, Simo holds a massive 34 khaki map world records. He also holds the record for the longest time on top of the world record leaderboard, just recently finally getting dethroned after a huge khaki hunting season. Outside of his TMNF khaki performances, he has also casually participated in the khaki reloaded events and consistently ranks in the top 10, even though TM20 has never been his main focus. And throughout his entire journey, Simo has never forgotten his roots, still building high quality maps to this day, one even being voted as the best map of Khaki's Khaki 8. He is still a prominent figure in the trial scene, recently building for Spam's trial and error event, as well as releasing the longest trial map of the year along with Nixion and Lowe. It's hard to overstate the impact Simo has had on the game of Trackmania, especially in the world of Khaki. After getting his third win, he says he's finally happy to let others battle for the victory in future Khaki events, and doesn't plan to try to win again moving forward. Nowadays, he's a full-time university student in Finland and dabbles in music and game design. For those interested in checking out his work, I've linked all his stuff in the description. While you're down there, feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed. I also recently launched a Patreon page for those wanting to support me directly, so go check that out as well. I really appreciate you for watching. See ya.